Good morning and welcome. Today is Sunday, March 14th. It is the fourth Sunday of Lent. And we're so glad you're with us this morning in this virtual way of worship, coming to you from Calvary Episcopal Church in Rochester, Minnesota. Let us gather together to worship God. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to God's people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. 
forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers, from Mount Behor the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water. And we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of the bronze and live. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. The psalm appointed for this morning is a portion of Psalm 107. If this language sounds a little different to you now, we are using the St. Helena's Psaltery, which you can find online and which we now own here at the church if you'd like to find out more about it. We'll read it together. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord who is good and whose mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe. The Lord gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took, took to rebellious, rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried out to you, O Lord, in their trouble, and you delivered, and you delivered them from their distress. You sent forth your word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let, Let them, them give thanks, thanks to you, O Lord, Lord, for your mercy and the wonders you do for your children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of your acts with shouts of joy. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. 
For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so may the son, must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and the people who love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'd like to welcome our parishioner and friend and sister, Barbara Toman, to our pulpit at Calvary this morning. Thank you, Barbara. In the name of the one who creates, redeems, and sustains, amen. As if living through the pandemic weren't enough, today we have this reading from the book of Numbers, snakes. Venomous bites in the wilderness, more snakes. Don't worry, that's just about all I'm going to say about snakes this morning. For me, snakes are a metaphor for fear. And fear is what I want to focus on today. Fear and the perfect love that casts out fear, that sucks out the venom of fear, like in the old movies when people would suck the venom out of rattlesnake bites. In our very human state, we always live with fear. Fear of failure, fear of the unknown, fear of pain and suffering, fear of death. And in these times of pandemic and struggles against injustice and political upheaval, our fears are magnified. Like snake venom, fear is poisonous. It oozes through us, causing spiritual paralysis making us incapable of giving and receiving compassion and mercy. Left untreated, fear can metastasize into hatred and hardness of heart. Fear can make us see our life as a cutthroat competition with winners and losers. There isn't enough to go around. Your gain is automatically my loss. We might even see our relationship with God in these terms, a race with winners and losers. Those of us who believe the right things, who live by certain rules, who say and do the right things, those are the ones who earn God's approval and achieve salvation. The rest of the world, well, they might face a fearsome eternity. But that thinking contradicts the heart and the wisdom of scripture, which tells us again and again that salvation isn't something we earn. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, writes, For by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the results of works, so that no one may boast. We do not earn salvation. It's a gift to us, to all people, freely given by God's loving kindness, through faith. We don't need to fear losing out. As if God's grace were finite, as if the supply might somehow run out and we'd be left high and dry. No. God chose to live on this earth 
and to be lifted up on the cross, like that serpent lifted up by Moses in the wilderness. That is the source of our salvation. It's a gift freely given to all people. Which brings us to the beautiful words in John's Gospel, the bit of scripture that, if you've memorized any bit of scripture, it's this one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. You've probably seen those words plastered on billboards and maybe even alluded to on the bottom of fast fashion shopping bags. It's a cryptic allusion, just the citation, John 3.16, no text. But stripped of their context, these words lose their true import and power. God so loved the world. God so loves the world that God continues to pour God's grace and mercy onto all of creation. For, as the passage goes on to say, God did not send the Son to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The passage speaks of judgment, and this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Let's not think of the judgment to come as punishment in the afterlife. The judgment is the tragic lost opportunity, the personal and societal crisis that befalls us in the here and now when we fear living in the light, when we take refuge in the darkness of selfishness, of injustice, of lack of compassion for our fellow beings and for all of God's creation. It's a tragedy when we do not set aside fear and instead live in the light of hope and of loving service to God and to one another. That's easy to say, but how do we overcome this fear, this fear of scarcity, of the other, of everything that causes us, as Paul says, to be dead in our trespasses? How do we wrestle our metaphorical snakes? Well, we walk with Jesus the way of love. We walk with our Redeemer, our Liberator, the one who frees us wholly to live into God's holy dream for us. It isn't always easy, and it requires a lot of trust. Trust in God and trust in one another. Trust that we are all saved, that is, called to walk in God's light, not by our works, but by God's grace through faith. We are saved not by our works, but to do good works. So trust that there is no limit to God's grace. It is freely available to all. For indeed, God so loves the world. Amen. Lord, you are in our midst, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us say the Nicene Creed together. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. 
He has spoken, spoken through, through the prophets. prophets. We, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Michael, the presiding bishop, and Craig, our bishop. For Iglesia Anglicana de Chile, for lay ministers and leaders throughout the Episcopal Church in Minnesota, for the faith community of the Church of the Good Shepherd in Wyndham, for our Calvary family, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Michael, Christy, Amara, Paul, Barb, Liesel, Dave, Ellen, and their family, and all who come to Rochester for hope and healing. I ask your thanksgivings for our Holy Week at Home helpers. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have glory, grace to glorify Christ in our own day. I'll ask your prayers for the situation happening in the Mexican-American border. I ask your prayers for a solution that serves peace with justice for the hundreds of children arriving every day from countries where violence and warfare rage, for their families and for our receivers, those who are working, that they may have open hearts, kindness and compassion and work for the good of all people. We offer this prayer to Holy God, amen. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people, and the multitude of your mercies will look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship today on this Lent 4 from Calvary Episcopal Church. We have a few announcements for um, people who are watching this in Rochester who are from out of town and also for our own Calvary congregation. Today is Sunday, March 14th. Last night we released an Evensong service on our YouTube channel that is in honor of the place we find ourselves right now in our world. Exactly one year ago on March 13th, we closed our doors to the public and to our congregation in order to keep one another and our neighbors safe. We wanted to mark that anniversary through prayer. We're also honoring and remembering the well over 500,000 people in the United States alone who have died from COVID-19 and remembering those who have cared for them and who continue to work to care to keep us safe. So if that even song is there, if you'd like to go and watch it, beautiful music included. I want to remind all of our adult choir members, Motec choir members, that every Wednesday at seven o'clock, Brian Williams convenes a group 
on Zoom, and all are invited to come for as long as you can every Wednesday to be part of that wonderful way of keeping the choir connected during these days when they cannot be connected by singing together. Next Sunday, March 21st, the same Brian Williams will be bringing together our children for a special children's chapel, and he wants to make sure that all of the kids who've been in kids' choirs especially know to come, and that Zoom link will be sent to all families this week. So next Sunday at 10 o'clock, March 21st, a special children's chapel with Brian. I have a feeling that music will be somehow involved. So I hope that all parents watching this can get your kids to show up for that. Finally, we are putting together Holy Week at Home resource bags. These are bags like our Advent resource boxes back before Christmas that have been put, created and put together by a wonderful group of helpers here at Calvary. They will be delivered to all households next Saturday, March 20th. But if you would like to come to the church and pick one up, that, that you can start doing that almost immediately. Just give us a call in the church office and Linda will know to get your bag down to the west entrance for you. And in that bag, you'll find all the resources that you will need to help you mark and celebrate Holy Week and Easter at home this year. If you were offering your gift at the altar and there, remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and, and of, of thine, thine own, own have, have we, we given, given thee. thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <clears throat> The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Eternal, Eternal God, God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and, and grant, grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Look mercifully on this, your family, Almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore through Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life is with you now and will remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to you.